today it is with a new immense sense of pride that I stand here I stand here as general secretary of a party that has had, had a long history a long history of struggle on behalf of the people of Guyana a party that was created by Cherry Jagan for this very purpose that we stand here today so that we can keep our people growing forward moving forward and to keep freedom and democracy strong and I'm so proud that we have not failed Cherry Jagan that we have not failed the founding principle of our party because as I look upon this crowd I see Guyana I see young people here I see women here I see oh, the elderly here I see people of every race in Guyana and all the mixes that we have in between. I see people of every religion, every profession, rich and poor, all working under the banner of the People's Progressive Party to get our country back to democracy. We are a family here. This PPP family, and it's a family that will lead Guyana into the future. A family that will fulfill the promise of this country. So, the five years that we have been out of office has not served to weaken us. In fact, it has strengthened us and strengthened our resolve to move forward. And the five years, the five years have led to the re-energizing of our party. Young people now have come to the fore and they will lead our party into the future, long, long into the future. And Irfan Ali comes from that generation, new leader who grew up in our party, who has all the skills to take our country forward. And he will be supported by all of us to make sure that we deliver on the promises that we're making here today. So, I know that many of you are here today but we must think about the others who are not here because as we speak now here there are thousands of political activists of our party who are checking the boxes the ballot boxes they're looking out for interest to see that it's the boxes are not overpacked that the seals are intact they're objecting to any process that would lead to the tampering on elections day so i want today at luziknan to say thank you to those people who couldn't be here who are working now i say to them stay strong because you are our eyes on the ground and there are thousands of them. I want to thank the thousands of others who over the past five years have worked assiduously, assiduously to check the list at least five times. In nearly 25,000 people we've had working for this party without a cent of pay, they all did it voluntarily. I want to thank them because it was their effort and your vote 
that led in November 2018 to the biggest victory the PPP has ever had at the local government election where we won by over 40,000 votes. And as I said before, the 50,000 votes is not enough. These elections we have to win by at least 70,000 votes so that the government understands, up and understands. Comrades, they know they have an appeal to us. All the polls have suggested that the PPP is way ahead, that we will win these elections. But, but polls can only come true if people vote on that day and that their votes are counted. And I want to assure you, as General Secretary, we'll fight tooth and nail as we have fought over the last years to keep the process clean. We are so happy that so many observers are here from around the world to look at the election process. But, and we welcome them here. We welcome all of them from the Carter Center, from the OAS, from the European Union. They're here. But we also have to be vigilant. The polling agents have to watch out. We have to ensure that nothing is tampered with. When we heard rumors about security threats, we went to see the commissioner of police and he gave the assurance that he will uphold the rule of law and that people who congregate outside of polling places would be breaking the law. So we will hold him to that assurance and to that commitment too. He said to us that they have adequate policemen to man each polling place, that the police will act professionally. He urged us to, to say to our supporters not to break the law. And we don't need to tell our supporters not to break the law because they don't break the law on election day. And I want to say to you, but let me tell you, you vote peacefully. He should also tell Balda Lawrence and Basil Williams and Jordan who've been urging people to congregate outside of polling places that they should be responsible when they speak because effectively what they're doing is urging people to break the law. And so comrades, when we did the polls, we understood the dissatisfaction in every group of Guyanese, the miners, the people in the agriculture sector, elderly, the families, mothers, etc. The entire Guyana has been dissatisfied with the tenure of the APNU government. So we know that the miners can't wait for March 2nd. They're just waiting to send these people back in. And I know that the rice farmers are waiting too for that to happen. And they can't, March 2nd can't come fast enough for the sugar workers because they too want to send this group back in. And comrades, there's many, many people who live in Sophia, in South Georgetown, they too have felt the broken promises of this regime. They never supported us in the past and they too want to see a change on March 2nd. So, let me tell you a sure way of knowing that someone is losing the election is when they get desperate. Look at our campaign. It's a positive campaign. We campaign on our achievements and we tell you our plans for the future. Their campaign has been marred in ad hominem attacks, on attack on Jagdeo, on Irfan Ali and the PPP. They can't speak about their achievements because they have no achievement. They lost 30,000 jobs when they promised jobs. 
They promised lower taxes and increased taxes by $91 billion. They promised better health care. Now you can't find drugs in the hospital. They promised the university student, a free university, increase the taxes there. They promised a double old age pension in 100 days, increase it by $4,000, and then took away free water from them. They took away from our children. They took away from our farmers. They took away from our miners. So what are they going to campaign with? They have no achievements. They can go to a rally and say we've achieved anything. Because as you've heard before, this road here was a PPP project. The Marriott was a PPP project. The airport was a PPP project. The Hope Canal, a PPP project. The West Coast Road, a PPP project. Every single thing that you can see what do they have to offer? What have been their achievements? Their achievements, $600 million missing from Durban Park. That is what the only thing they've achieved and a string of scandals and thievery that we have evidence for. And their plans for the future. Read the pamphlet that they put out now belatedly as their manifesto. And it has absolutely no plan, coherent plan for the future. So all the time, it's about Irfan Ali. About Irfan Ali has a doctorate from the University of the West Indies. 99% of the people in this country don't have that. And they're still questioning him. They even question his size. But he is strong and, and healthy, and he can lead us into the future. That is what. And me, they're crossing my ball head every day. So, I, comrades, that is all in their music, in their platform messages. They can't talk to people, look them in their faces and say, we will work for your children because they took away stuff from people's children. They can't look the pensioners in their eyes like I'm looking you in your eyes now and say, we will double your pension because they didn't do that. What are they gonna look? How are they gonna look the miners or the farmers in their eyes? They're ashamed. They just cuss people now. So you have read our campaign promises. You know that with us uh, there, that this, these promises will be fulfilled. These are promises of our party. When we produce manifestos in the past, we made sure that we, kept, we were faithful to those. So I was saying to you, one of the signs of losing is when you can't find positive things to say about your opponents. Another sign is when Valda Lawrence writes Ram Jatan and say, can you stop people from Suriname coming over because we have the coronavirus. Now Valda Lawrence scared that your family from Suriname will be coming back to vote on March 2nd. The coronavirus, the coronavirus didn't start yesterday and in any case every day they have 200 Haitians who are coming through that they're smuggling to to Brazil because they're ripping off those people too the Haitian people so one sign of desperation that you know you're not going back there is when two days before the elections you give one of your supporters a financier of the AFC his name is Lloyd Singh, 164,000 acres of forest land. You know you're not going back there because they could have waited the next week to give him. They had to give him this week, but we're gonna take it back, right? You want us to take it back. And because it's corrupt, and guess who is gonna get it? Because this is in the Burbies River. The same people from Linden 
Aishuni, Kwakwani, the loggers who needed that land to feed their families. You saw a protest with one man from Aichuni saying, we're starving because since this government took office, all the jobs on that corridor have been lost. So I want to say to the people in Region 10, you're going to get that land that they gave to Lloyd Singh when we take it back. Another sure sign that you are losing is when the last week before election, you give away 800 acres of prime land that you took from the sugar workers. Just here on the East Coast and the East Bank. Well, let me tell the people who need house lots, those lands will be taken back so we can build house lots for ordinary people. One sure sign is the acceleration of the corruption. A man sent me a WhatsApp message and said, Ramjatan and them selling gun licenses like planting chip in the last week because they know they're not going to be there next week. But trust me, he too will be investigated. We're promising you that. Comrades, they know they're on their way out. And the polls show that when they become desperate, they will try to resort to wanting racism. This is why they're going into communities across the country, in Linden and in South Georgetown, and whisper, they have a whisper campaign trying to stir up racism. But people know in Linden, and the, and the afro Guyanese farmers and the kids in, in Sophia that in the past four and a half years, they didn't care about them when they were hobnobbing with friends. Now it's election time. There's suddenly a concern about those kids. But they are not, those kids are not going to be fooled again. The young people are not going to be fooled again. And so, comrades, we have to fight racism. We are a party that includes every person of every race. And that is why we were in government for 23 years. And that is why when we get in office, we will stay there a long time. We will work for all of Guyana. So people in Linden, because they will hear us today, they'll be watching us today too. These people did nothing there. Now they run back into Linden. They said they had an 11 point plan, nothing. If you go into Linden and you walk Amelia's Ward or Block 22, that war lands that were worn out from the bauxite, you have housing schemes now, new schools, etc., built under the PPP. Like how if you go to Diamond and Eccles and Fouls here on the East Coast and many parts of the country, you will see that people have new housing plots and new housing schemes. This is what the PVP is doing. So I say to the people in Linden, when they come with the messages of racism, tell them to using a Ramjatan expression, haul your so-and-so. That is what Ramjatan often says. So when they go there too, anywhere, they can't go to Burbies anymore or Esikobo because people don't want to see them anymore. So they're getting desperate, they're getting worked up. And comrades, there, one sure sign of desperation is when you start hiding from the international reporters. So I've had several interviews with people who have come into from various countries in the world and news outfits. And the government is scared of giving them an interview. And you know why they're scared? Because they sold us out on the oil and gas sector. They're afraid of being asked any question. Yesterday, the Wall Street Journal just reinforced what was produced or what was in a document by Clyde and Company, the own government's report, which said that Exxon 
wrote the negotiating brief for the government of Guyana and that Granger knew about this when they sold us out. We lost at least 15 million Guyana dollars for every man, woman, and child. They're so compromised that they're still defending the sellout deal. So the only party that will correct this, the only party that will fix these contracts and bring back the benefits to Guyanese, all Guyanese, it's the People's Progressive Party. And so, next week, when Irfan Ali is the president, the oil companies will have to come back and talk about a fairer deal for Guyanese. And, and those who did wrong things, they will have to pay the penalty too. The comrades, next week, when Irfan Ali is the president, we will start working on bringing the gas from offshore onshore so that we can generate power, cheap power. For our people, so that they can get cheaper, the electricity rate can come down by more than half and to use the gas and we're going to make sure that the gas comes on shore to generate a whole pile of other subsidiary industries that will create thousands of jobs. And I'm sure that next week, when Irfan Ali is the president, the sugar workers are going to be called in and their representatives, and they will support you. And the miners, the miners can look forward next week to all the taxes being removed once again so they can go back to their jobs and start making money again. And the rice farmers and the 2 a.m. curfew that Ramjetan installed would be gone from next week too. So comrades, you are looking forward. Think about what is a possibility for next week. Think about what could happen next week. Once we win, the whole country changes. A fresh air of breeze will blow through our land. Once again, we can walk this country, all people of all races, hand in hand, holding our heads up high because we have a government that is looking out for our interests. That could happen next week. Your children could have a better future starting next week. The pensioners can start looking for a brighter future starting next week. Think about it, imagine it, and then go to the polling places and make sure that sun, rain, law, sloth, even if it takes all day, we stand our ground in that line on Monday, 2nd of March. We stand our ground for anything. We make sure that nothing deters us. We fetch everyone out, neighbors, friends, family, strangers. We put them on our backs, on our heads, in our vehicles, on our bicycles, in our cars, everywhere. We take them out there to vote. Just think about what the country can look forward to next week. And these are people who never supported us can look forward to those changes too. So I am counting on you. This is your chance. We fought a very hard fight to get back to this stage because they tried to demoralize us. They tried to harass us by charges, etc. Wild accusations, all sorts of things. But they didn't manage to break our spirit because we are strong. Our party is strong. We're never going to be intimidated. They can't break us spirit, never will. And we, because we held together, we fought them off in the streets, in the parliament, and every other arena. But now it's your turn to join the fight. And you join the fight on Monday with your ballot, with your vote. This is your, the day of reckoning has come 
for all the wrongdoings, for all the wrongdoings on our country. That day of reckoning is March 2nd. So I'm counting on all of you here, the tens of thousands of you here today to ensure that you play your part. And when you go to that polling place, keep in your head what the future can look like, what next week will look like, what our country will look like four years, five years, six years from now. That we all be very proud of it. Thank you very much, comrades.